this is my letterbox right here for my essential horror films. I could definitely put this in chat. Um, the prerequisites for me picking these are are there they were pivotal points in horror movies. Um, they are staples in horror movies, and some of them are just a little bit outside the box. But if you like one of these movies, I could give you ten movies that are just like this that you will like. This right here better helps me understand what to suggest to people. Um, my goal in anything that I'm into is to have other people into it. You get what I'm saying? I don't like gatekeeping. I don't like keeping people away from things that I'm interested in. So, like, for example, I believe Alien is one of the greatest sci-fi horror movies. And if not, I, I'll say it this. These two, The Thing and Alien, birthed the entire genre of sci-fi horror. Phenomenal movies. Blair Witch Project. If it wasn't for Blair Witch Project and it dropped, how when that movie dropped, we wouldn't have, which is one of my favorite genres of horror movies, which is found footage movies. Event Horizon, cosmic space horror on a level unseen. There has not been a movie that has been like this before or after. Just a very good sci-fi horror movie that takes place with the cosmic horrors. Evil Dead, and this is not the original Evil Dead. This is the remake 2013. Now, I'm telling you this right now. This movie is the best remake I have ever seen out of anything ever. This is, and I'll say it one more time. This is the best remake of any movie that I have ever seen ever. This movie I will not say is better than the original. What I will say it is good and it stands on its own. You do not need to watch any of the original Evil Dead movies to get busy with this one right here. This is a phenomenal movie. Paranormal Activity, I just watched it yesterday. Again, a staple in the idea of uh, found footage movies. A lot of movies tried to be like Blair Witch Project when it came to the found footage uh, genre where it was a lot of people running around aimlessly in chaos. The movie would ramp up, ramp up, ramp up. Shit would get real, and the movie would end. Paranormal Activity is a little bit different. It's a lot of stationary type shit. And Paranormal Activity did something that was phenomenal where all of us at all ages, we all see shit out of the corner of our eye. We all see things that you know, it's a shadow. We don't know what it is and things like that. Paranormal Activity definitely plays into those things. If you've ever felt that feeling of like, man, did the door move? Was that shadow over there moving? Paranormal Activity will definitely kick into that. Insidious, just a good old-fashioned fucking possession movie, but just a different take on it. It's more modern. It's solid. Jaws. Now, this is a very dated movie, okay? But I always had to put some of the ones that walked before everyone ran because Jaws legitimately had people not swimming in the ocean and lakes and et cetera, et cetera, for a good amount of time. It was a very, very pivotal um, movie in the terms of horror films. It wasn't a big fucking giant alien creature. It wasn't a slasher. It was something that actually exists in the oceans today, and it's coming at you in a way that no one could expect. You're very vulnerable in the water. We are land creatures, et cetera, et cetera. Jaws is the reason for that. Um Deep Blue Sea is fucking good and also fucking hilarious. Deep Blue Sea is a good, good movie. But like I said, every single one of these movies, if you like it, I will find five to ten different horror films that you could watch going from them. The Exorcist. Again, there has never been before or never will be a movie like The Exorcist. The way that people saw this movie and this came out in the fucking late 70s, I'm not exaggerating when I tell you this. This movie had people passing the fuck out, and I'm not joking. In the late 70s, what up, Riri? I, did I see Godzilla? I loved it. Godzilla was a phenomenal movie. Godzilla Minus One is one of the best. It's my favorite movie of 2023. Um, to give context, The Exorcist happened at a time where the only time you could really see a movie is going to the movies. And a lot of people were sheltered. It, people weren't exposed to this level of grotesque fucking shit. And also, it played on a very big part where during this time, a lot of people were Catholic or Christians. So people really were afraid of demonic possessions and shit like that. This movie was fucking people up. Great movie. 10 out of fucking 10. I'm telling you, good movie. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Again, the, one of the most pivotal fucking horror films ever. And it, what was great about this movie was, was there's a level of fucking brutality to it that 
I think birthed and pushed forward the slasher genre. It wasn't anything supernatural. It was just a bunch of crazy fucking rednecks in the middle of West Texas. Great movie. The Void. Now, this is still cosmic horror, but it's a different spin on it. And the reason why I like this movie is because it took a genre that was in some ways dated, took practical effects, updated it, and gave us a really fucking solid film. The Void is a really good movie into depths of chaos. It was great. Um, Exorcist TV show. Hold on now. The Exorcist TV show season one is one of the most, and I, and I don't use this term lightly, underrated and underappreciated horror TV shows to ever exist. I will put it up there in the top five with X-Files in terms of paranormal shit. I am telling you right now, if you are a fan of The Exorcist, go watch the season one of The Exorcist, a phenomenal fucking TV show. No one did. Um, matter of fact, I feel like, thank you, Nate, for bringing that up. Um, Void is really good, Re. I promise you Void's really good. Um, man, Exorcist season one was, was, was just great. Fox really gets in their bag sometimes. When it comes to the paranormal stuff, I, I tell you what. This was so good. Sometimes God gives you a job to do. And when that happens, you have to drop everything and just start walking. Hey, Casey, how's your sister doing? She just got her cast off last week. She's a lot of fun. Father, that was a lovely service. You want to talk sometime? My door is always open. God, is everyone in this family allergic to light? What do you want? Just call mom crying, so that wasn't weird. You're so mean to her. She only climbs up on her cross when she wants some attention. My daughter, Catherine. She's back from college. She's different. Cat? The way she talks, the way she looks at me. It's not depression. I know depression. There are things going on in the house. I do remember house, Fringe. I did not finish it though. Inside the walls. Mom? I am not a crazy person. I'm not saying you're crazy. There is something inside my house. It's a demon. A demon? And it's trying to take my daughter. Father Marcus, what can you tell me about demonic possession? I had a dream, and you're in it. Go on. There was a child tied to a bed. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. You didn't come here for advice. You came for help. Who is it? A girl in my parish. Maybe. Now you believe. You're afraid. Yeah, you should be too. You're being manipulated by forces you can't even begin to understand. Anybody up there? Now, I need to I need to say something, okay? I am never one to tell people that they need to watch the whole first season for them to like the second season. This is not that. What I will say to you is there is a very good reason why you need to watch this show to the end. I will not say why, but I will just tell you watch the whole fucking show. I'm not asking you even. I haven't even finished the second season, and I don't care to. Season one, peak, peak horror greatness. Uh, back to my letterbox real fast. We'll get through this, and then we'll finish watching the other stuff that we had going on. Um, Return of the Living Dead, again, one of the greatest zombie films ever from one of the greatest zombie franchises ever. But the fact with this one was was that the zombies learned how to communicate. 
This shit was spooky as fuck and really fucked off. Where is it being shown? That's a good question. Um, The Exorcist. What up, man? Uh, TV show. How can you watch it? It's on Hulu. If you have Hulu, you could watch it. You could watch it. Um, Poltergeist. Very, very good movie. Sometimes it's forgotten the conversation of horror films, but honestly, just a good old-fashioned haunted house movie, but there's some twists to it that makes it stand out from the difference of the stuff that was coming out at the time. Um, the Fog. Ooh, okay. That, another brutal movie. Um, G, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. This is what she was in, I think, right around the same time of Halloween. But it was just very creepy. But it, 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 the, the movie The Fog mastered the art of you not seeing what is coming but still scaring the shit out of you. It really played on leave it up to the imagination without it being corny. Um, yeah. Re, well, Return of the Living Dead 2 felt like a parody more so than return of the living dead this shit really just took it and ran with it return of the living dead 2 which it's confusing because it's return of the living dead 2 is like return of the living dead even with the same actors that are that magically are alive even though they were in the one before this but there's it's not a clear sequel if that makes sense um just in the, the same way with evil dead and evil dead 2 like evil dead 2 was a funnier version of evil dead with the same events happening just with a lot more ridiculousness um american werewolf in london the greatest uh werewolf movie next to the howling uh john landis one of the greatest and i mean this greatest um uh special effects uh and directors um out there showed his fucking ass on this shit also if you are a fan of the movie or music video for michael jackson's thriller same guy that did this did thriller boom nightmare on elm street enough said evil dead 2 again this birthed the whole ash with the chainsaw on his hand deal and it all and it really played a very good intro to the comedy horror genre really good the shining psychological as fuck really wants you to pay attention and honestly one of the very first movies i've ever seen from the horror genre that made me feel like it was legitimate art silence of the lambs which was such a good detective thriller movie that it crossed into the lines of a horror film because this was the first movie that was a thriller type deal that made people afraid to go outside of their house because of the buffalo bill types plus the idea that you had someone out there skinning people and wearing them on the leather face level but someone that was very good and and smooth with it kind of brought reality to the whole genre it was really good and the fly another fox sci-fi horror movie extremely underutilized in the conversation of sci-fi horror movies but definitely a movie you should see gina davis jeff goldblum good shit right there anyway if you want to see this and you want to save this feel free i don't care i just like i said um if you want to uh get recommendations on horror movies from me and this is going to be my fucking list for you to go through and see what you like from it and i will always try to lead you into the direction of something that is similar to it so there you go